Okay, Digital Warriors, welcome back. Um, you know, in June, so here in a couple weeks, we've got Steel Beast 4.0, the new release, the new major update for Steel Beast coming out. And I thought it'd be a good time to get back in the saddle, get back into the heavy metal, and uh, start putting warheads on foreheads. What I did notice was uh, I get a lot of questions. E e even though I haven't done a Steel Beast video in quite some time, I still get a lot of questions and messages, you know, asking about the game and how to play it and, and all this stuff. So what I think I might do is just do these quick tutorials. Um, as you can see here in the game, each vehicle, uh, each crewable vehicle here, and we can see them all here from the Centaur all the way down to the uh, T-72M1. Um, <clears throat> All of these have tutorials because you can do something, you know, with these vehicles, whether it be fight with them, what have you. So what I think I'm going to start is I'm going to start off with the M1A1, then we'll hit the M1A2 and the M2A2, and then we'll take it from there. Probably hit the Leos or the Challengers after that, and then the CV90s. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through these. I'm going to kind of skip some of these tutorials because they're kind of irrelevant, like the driving ones. Um, it, it's just... I don't know too many people who actually play the game from the driver's perspective. Uh, usually, you know, you just give them orders on the map and or command them from, uh, you know, third person. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely do the gunnery for each vehicle. That's going to take us through how to use the main sight, the auxiliary sights, how to, uh, you know, fight when emergency mode when your sights are busted, how to manually turn the turret, <coughs> uh, how to manually punch in range uh, if your laser range finder's down, all that good stuff. Um, the artillery tutorial, it's pretty much the same for each uh, each vehicle, um, so I'll probably do that once, and then what else? The TC stuff, I might get into, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Mainly we want to want to learn how to fight with the vehicle. So we're going to start off with the M1A1 uh, with the first gunnery tutorial and take it from there. So here we are, we're uh, M1 Gunnery A. So we'll go ahead and open it, play as me. And I, I am stoked for 4.0. The, the videos that eSims has been releasing about, you know, the graphical updates to the game, uh, new vehicles have been introduced to the, to the sim. Uh, it, it's going to be a good summer for sure. <coughs> All right. So what I'll do, each tutorial, obviously, you're going to get a brief. I'll read you the brief because I'm not sure how clear this uh, fine text is going to show up in the video. But I'll go ahead and read the uh, the brief, and then we'll 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 jump in the uh, in the tank, and we'll start off. So, basic gun controls. Most of the time, as a gunner on the M1, you'll be looking through the gunner's primary sight, otherwise known as the GPS, and operating the gun in normal fire mode. In normal mode, the gun is fully stabilized, which means the tank will compensate for any hull motion within you know acceptable limits to keep the main gun aimed at whatever you're looking at in the GPS. So we're going to be referring to it as the GPS from now on, gunner's primary sight. Uh, the thing about the military, and this is just a side note, the, the U.S. Army loves their fucking acronyms. Uh, so, in order to activate stabilization as well as to aim, laze, and shoot, the gunner must squeeze uh, one or both of the palm switches located on the gunner's control handles. Since the standard joystick has no button that is convenient to keep depressed for a long time, the palm switch for the gunner and steel beast is reversed. That is, in a gunner's position, the palm switch is always on unless you hold down uh, joystick button 3 or the P key. Uh, the reason that the palm switch is modeled at all is because on the M1 it is used to disable automatic lead. And that we'll discuss in subsequent tutorials. For me, I actually play Steel Beast with a mouse and keyboard. I know a lot of people play it with a, you know, a joystick or a flight stick. Um, but, you know, it's, it's to each his own. It's, it's what I've grown accustomed to playing with. I've got, you know, my palm stick uh, release button mapped to uh, one of the buttons, the side buttons on my mouse. So whatever works for you, uh, you know, run with it. <clears throat> so the basic gun controls in Steel Beast are, if using a joystick, you guys can read this here, I'm not going to go over that, if using a mouse, uh, left click on the GPS window to move the mouse, left click it again to stop aiming, uh, to laze, I've got my laze mapped to my right button, or, or my right mouse button, but the default is a control key, to fire, space bar, uh, to toggle the magnification, and on the M1A1 it's, it's a 3x or 10x magnification, uh, is the N key. And to toggle the main gun versus the coax machine gun is the M key. And then obviously we already talked about this, the palm switch, just hold down the P key or whatever button you've got it mapped to. 
So, in this tutorial, we're going to practice aiming and shooting at the six dummy tanks on the range. Do not worry about lasing the target since the approx approximate range is already entered in the ballistic computer. Lasing will be covered in the next two tutorials. Hold down the joystick uh, 3 or the P key to turn the palm switch off and you can hear the clunk. And you, It's a noticeable audible sound uh, in the game of the uh, gun uh, stabilization deactivating. Uh, notice that with the palm switch off, a red warning sign appears in the upper part of the screen and you cannot steer the gun. So that's, that's important when you're fighting. You will automatically be placed in the GPS window at the start of the tutorial. Once you started the tutorial, you can return to this map screen by pressing F5 or through the menus. <clears throat> you can return to the GPS window by pressing F1 or clicking on the green exit map button uh, right up here in the top right. So for this uh, tutorial, this is our ammo here. We've got 75% load of M829A1 APFSD uh, armor-piercing, uh, what is it, fin scarting sable round the 1988 versions kinetic round and we've got some uh, some heat rounds some m830 and we've got 25 percent load we don't really have to worry about the red ammo because they're not going to be shooting back we can look at the map by clicking terrain up here um, really there's not much to see because this is just a you know a quick and dirty range here with six dummy tanks obviously we're here facing south uh southeast we'll go ahead start we're going to jump in the site so steel beast it automatically dumps you in a pit so to speak. If you click anywhere, you can see where it's standard mouse cursor. If you click anywhere, you can start panning around. This is where the loader would sit over here. Uh, back there is the uh, the breach or the, the the ammo door where he pulls the rounds out. Right here is the breach of the gun. That's our auxiliary site. This is our primary site. Right here is our ballistic computer where we can manually enter range. And you know we can look around. Blah 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 blah. Oop, nope, we don't want to quit. So what we want to do? We want to click on the site. You can see it changes to a little hand or you can hit the hot key, one of the F keys. Um, we can also switch uh, ammo selection down here. Right now we're on Sable round, but we can go if we had impasse or heat rounds, uh, if we want to switch off to the coax. But we're going to go ahead and jump in the site. So this is the primary site on the M1A1. And it's very similar to the M1A2 as well, but the M1A2 has got a, a couple of added features. So I'm going to give you a quick and dirty uh, kind of overview of the standard Steel Beast window here that you play in. Um, again, this is the standard sight. Each vehicle has a different uh, sight picture, um, so it doesn't always look like this, but once you learn one, um, they're all fairly similar and you can work your way around. So down here is our range. Right now we're zeroed out at 1,200 meters. Uh, this right here in the bottom right, this uh, 1, 1, slash A. <coughs> this is the tank that we're crewing right now. Down here is your orientation. So right now, you know, Corey, if we were to look at the map, um, we would be facing southeast here. So our tank is facing southeast. You can see our turret turns independent of the, uh, of the main vehicle chassis. So you can always kind of tell which way your vehicle is oriented, uh, you know, as far as the gun in relationship to the body of the tank. Right here is a damage report. We don't have a commander in this one. So that's why it's saying, you know, commander XX. Obviously, we have our fuel load, and we've got our current... Uh, ammunition load up here. So for our Sabos, we've got 13 loaded up. Uh, and we've got 17 in reserve. And we can change that, but we'll save that for another tutorial. Up here in the top left is how uh, much longer we have in the missions. We have roughly 7 minutes and 45 seconds. So how do you play Steel Beast? Okay, well, right now we just have a standard cursor, and you can see it doesn't do anything. It doesn't move. <coughs> but if we click anywhere, we can start moving the gun around. Alright, and you can hear that turret, the gears and everything, catching up with it when you get a little bit too fast. So what you want to do is you want to find your tank, or your target, hit N key to zoom, boop, and we're not going to do any lasing this tutorial, and you just put the cursor on it, or, you know, the crosshair, the dot, and what I like to do so I don't come off target, if it's a stationary target anyway, is w once I get my uh, crosshairs on a target, I'll click the mouse again. That way, no matter if I move the mouse around, the barrel of the gun, the turret, is not going to traverse. Because, you know, you can get some, you know, I've got my mouse DPI settings set pretty high, so, you know, I can dance the mouse around. And it causes me to miss shots. So that's just, again, that's just a personal way to play. That's me, just how I've grown up to play it. But let's go ahead and take out these targets here. So it's BREM. 
Put it on him. And hit the space bar. That's a good hit. You'll know when you've killed a vehicle in Steel Beast when they're EA. They're smoking like that and on fire. Uh, let's see if we can get a different reaction here. The turret pops off. That's another good indication you've killed the target. And let's see. So you notice how his barrel is uh, perfectly level. Let's see if we can get it. Now that popped the, uh, the turret off. That popped the turret off. Sometimes when you kill a tank, you'll notice the, uh, the, the de-elevation of the barrel will just droop down. And that's just another good indication of that you've killed them. Alright, so that's all six targets. He should be dead. He took a save around. He's a light-skinned vehicle. Let's see if we get a uh, mission end screen. No. We're, yep, there it is. Sometimes on lighter uh, armored vehicles like that, you know, the sable can actually pass through. And you may not get a kill on the vehicle. But there we go. First tutorial in the bag for the M1A1. Uh, like I said, we're going to be going through a couple of these. Uh, so stay tuned for the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.